Kei aku nui, kei aku rahi, rarau mai ki te hui. Ko mihi ngā rangi tēnei, e mihi atu nei, kia koutou katoa. Welcome to the hui, Māori current affairs for all New Zealanders. E tarua ke nei. A 13-year-old struggling with a debilitating disease. When I have a bad bug, I struggle to keep up with other people. We follow his whanau's attempt to get access to the drug he so desperately needs. It's hard to know that something is there and you can't have it and it's something that's actually going to prolong the life of your child. Oh, it's just... And he's turning Tourette's into comedy gold with two million followers. Oh my God. I'm on my way to being the biggest account in the country and I'll get there. It's got to give me time. <laughs> we meet TikTok star Uncle Tix. Mai. For many whānau, last week's budget offered a lifeline for loved ones living with serious illnesses. But for others, the funding increase for Pharmac won't be enough. I hit the road with one whānau who can't afford Trikafta, the miracle medicine their son needs to live a long, healthy life. Every morning, 13-year-old Case Williams goes through the same gruelling routine. Breathing in and out of his nebulizer to clear his mucus filled lungs. This is the life of a child with cystic fibrosis, the deadly inherited disorder, which cuts life expectancy to just 37 years. <coughs> what is it like for you living with cystic fibrosis? Um, it's annoying, but. Um... Yeah, kind of getting used to it. I guess you're used to hospitals too, eh? Yeah. Case has a close-knit whānau who give him all the afi and aroha he needs. How are you? Mm. Good, how are you? But it's still a devastating diagnosis for this sports-mad kid from Te Papaioia. What has it meant for sports and things like that? When I have a bad bug, it's like I struggle to keep up with other people and like running stuff and I have to take my nebulizer to my mates and stuff and then I have to do it there. Come on. Good girl. What makes the situation even worse is that there is a drug that could help Case, but it costs $400,000 a year. Trikafta has the potential to turn cystic fibrosis from a life-threatening disorder to a manageable condition. But Pharmac doesn't fund it, and it's not even on the list of drugs it may fund in the future. It shouldn't be a lot of money and, yeah, it just probably needs to be a little bit cheaper for people that are struggling. Today, Case, his mother Janine, sister Jakaya and Nan Carol boarded a bus headed for Pōneke. They're carrying a petition with more than 100,000 signatures, pushing for a complete overhaul of Pharmac, the body which decides what medicines are funded in New Zealand. This is the big one. That really goes to the heart of the issue, which is about funding Pharmac and reforming the way that it works. Outside Parliament, on a wet, miserable day, these framed photographs are a memorial of the 50 people who have died while waiting for drugs to be funded. A heartbreaking reminder for Fano, who have watched their loved ones pass away when medicine could have helped. Patients Voice Aotearoa spokesman Malcolm Mulholland. Give Pharmac the money that they need in order to get these drugs funded so people can live and live well um, and also to reform the agency. Let's not just stop with a half-assed review. Let's actually go the full hog, take a good look at it because unless we do, people will suffer into the future. You know, you would have read a lot about the Māori Health Authority and the plans to devolve funding and resources to Māori for them to make their own decisions, commissioning and the rest of it. Have you had a thought about um, the way that Pharmac works? Yeah, oh, look, I think there is some merit in actually having the discussion about whether or not Māori would be better served um, having their drug access come through a Māori Health Authority. But certainly when you look at what happened with uh, Keytruda, it was funded for melanoma. It's predominantly a disease that affects non-Māori. Great for them, don't get me wrong, but for Māori, we need Keytruda for lung, and that kills a lot of our people on a weekly basis. For Case's mum, Janine, marching on Parliament was an emotional experience as she silently pleaded for her son's life to matter 
to the politicians who'd gathered. It's hard to know that something is there and you can't have it and it's something that's actually going to prolong the life of your child. Could you ever imagine yourself to be in such a desperate situation? No, no. And you don't want to ever imagine yourself to be in a situation like this. Yeah, it's the one you don't wish upon yeah, your worst enemy. So while politicians watched on, Fano lay in silent protest, hoping their message would be heard. I would have laid there for two weeks if it meant that something was going to happen from this and a message was going to get across. You know, I just held Case's hand and, you know, and, and he's young, but I know that he understands why we were there and how important it is for us to get that, that message across. And as the rain fell, Māori Party co-leader Debbie Ngāriwa Pekka provided shelter. We're all here for you, whānau. Insisting their message was being heard. What did she say? Well, she just said, hang in there, whānau, we are here, we can hear you. You may not think that we can and you may not think this is worth it, but it is worth it. And so when people do hear you, is that everything? Oh, yeah. Yeah, and we know there's a lot of support out there. So we want, just want um, our message to get across. You know, we are with it. You know, everybody is with it. There's some beautiful messages in the placards, and one of them is, I'm rare and I'm worth it. And when you consider that, you know, what we call taonga, when really taonga is just life. Yeah, yeah. life precious. Yeah, let's look after it and, and for case. You know, worst case scenario, we don't get the wonder drug that we need, then we will make sure his life is as awesome as it can be. You know, but, yeah, to have that drug, it will just mean it, yeah, it will be for a lot longer. He taonga, te oranga. Ka aroha hoki. Kia mai tōni mai rā, te titero hei muri i ngā whakatairanga. Ka kōre roa hau ki te pirimia. Kia Jacinda Ardern.
Hoki mai anō. Before the break, we met a whānau desperate to access a new wonder drug for cystic fibrosis. The family of 13-year-old Case Williams were hoping a funding boost for Pharmac would allow the agency to purchase Tricafta, which costs around 400000 per person a year. They took their message to Parliament along with other desperate families, but despite a $200 million increase in funding, it won't be enough to give New Zealand kids access to Tricafta. I spoke to Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern about Case's predicament. Did his pleas fall on deaf ears? No, no, not at all. And you know, one of the things that you know, since I've been a politician, I've consistently heard calls for at different times different drugs for the purposes of different treatment. And what we've got to do is make sure that we're continuing to fund Pharmac, but ultimately that they are the ones still making those decisions. And that's really critical for us. Politicians should never make the calls around what drugs are and aren't funded. Mm. But we have, over time, increased Pharmac's budget by 25%. It's over a billion dollars now, but they then may need to make those critical decisions. When you consider um, that, other, that other countries spend 15% of their health budget on Pharmac, we spend just 5%. Are we not spending enough? We have a really unique model, and that's one of the reasons that it wouldn't be straightforward just to compare the way New Zealand operates to others, because we basically have a bulk buying model. One thing it doesn't necessarily, or has been seen to necessarily serve, are very small groups of the population who have rare disorders or particular health needs. So we are undertaking a review of the model to check whether are there are things that we need to change to better serve those communities. Yeah, but I guess because the family uh, was hopeful and hope is actually all they've got because as their parents as uh, a builder and a teacher they just cannot raise the $400,000 a year that Case needs and after the budget um, decision last week they were pretty desperate and that 13 year old boy was wanting to shift his family to Australia. What's your advice to him? Should he leave this country where his family's been for 900 years? Well, of course or, we, of course we, we don't want out. people to leave New Zealand under any circumstances and we want to make sure that we have a health system that's meeting people's mm. needs. Now the one thing we do know is actually there are people who are in circumstances where as I say they have, there are a smaller mm. group, often with uh, drugs that may be seen as for those high needs groups and higher costs, are we serving those groups well? That is for us to check the settings of, but the decisions around what to fund, that's still for Pharmac. And is that, a, is that an, a review that you're doing at the moment? Yes, what? we started that some months ago. It was one of the things that we pledged to do during the election and we've already kicked it off. Um, we have a great group of people involved with that review work. And will you put children first? The Children's Commissioner says that actually um, children and young people should be prioritised and advantaged in the provisions of health services. So when you're considering Case, a 13-year-old boy, shouldn't he be front and centre of those decisions? Yeah, and in fact, those are some of the things that Pharmac, of course, take into consideration when they're making their decisions. Drugs, but do that they? Has because been cystic as well. fibrosis is, is relatively for young people and their drug is not even on the list. And, and cancer drugs, for instance, you will have seen that the general practice has been that there's a different, uh, we've had a different way of operating for the funding and provision of cancer drugs and cancer care for children. But again, it's heartbreaking for me because I, I, I receive those stories and not just for those who suffer from cystic fibrosis, of which I've met many, but other people with different needs. But I still would never want to see a scenario, even if I were in opposition, I would never call for a scenario where I'm the one making the decisions. I'm not the expert, and we should never politicise pharmaceutical funding in this country. I would hate to see that. The um, Health Minister, Andrew Little, last week when he was asked about that protest, referred to some of those who marched in the group as using extremist rhetoric. Are you comfortable with that kind of um, language? Oh, look, and, and I would always check in what circumstances a minister was making a, a remark like that. I mean, I because they feel I, like it was about them. Oh, and I, I, no, I know Andrew, mm -hmm. and I know that would not have been his intent. You know, again, it, we can't imagine what it's like to be in a circumstance either where you rely on those drugs for yourself or for your children. And so I, I won't ever pretend to know what that feels like. Um, Māori budget opportunities, the budget has delivered a billion dollars for Māori initiatives um, compared with just 93 million in 2017. 
Is it an acknowledgement that there are extreme inequities between Māori and Pākehā? Yes. Mm. Yes, it is. Everyone deserves to have decent, accessible health care in New Zealand, but not everyone is receiving it. And we see it in, in the stats for Māori in New Zealand. Our health system has been failing them. And so, yes, the work we're doing is an acknowledgement of that, but you'll find the same statistics in housing. Māori home ownership sits at 30%. So the question should be, what are we going to do about that? Mm. We're willing to do something. Uh, and look, we can have a debate over whether or not others would do it differently, but let's not ignore the issues. And one of the other welcomed uh, increases is for benefits, yes. projected to lift up to 33,000 children out of poverty. How do you ensure that the extra money goes into those kids' tummies and not the landlord's pockets, though? That's one of the things that we were really mindful of when we were in working on the policy. We went back and looked at some of the closest examples and times we've had when we've had an increase in, for instance, main benefits, and that was in response to COVID. Uh, there was nothing there to suggest that the rent increases then were anything additional to what you'd normally see. We will keep an eye on it, but I'd like to think the change we made where landlords are unable to increase more than once a year should help with that. The Children's Commissioner again says um, maybe linking the accommodation supplement to housing costs so families don't have to bear the brunt, but the government does. Would that be something you'd consider? And so we've said that we'll generally just we'll be keeping an eye on what happens um, to rents in response to what we've done. But as I say, the last statistics, New Zealand data that we have on rents tells us about the increases are sitting about 3%. So they haven't mirrored what we've seen happen in our house price growth. Nonetheless, we've also said we want to look at the accommodation supplement. We're doing a review of working for families and accommodation supplement because we want to ensure the billions of dollars that we are putting in to support people in housing is it really addressing housing need? So um, despite the backlash surrounding the new Māori Health Authority, it's been allocated $126 million straight off. Yep. Clearly you don't think it's an example of racist segregation as the leader of the opposition does? Absolutely not. And I will argue strongly uh, against any suggestion otherwise, but also I've argued strongly against the nature and tone of that debate. Do you think you shut her down you know, fast enough? I th for Māori, it's been a really difficult couple of weeks. I've called it out at every single opportunity I've had is, in my mind, being about a political strategy that, as a nation, takes us back decades uh, and is also a departure from what I saw previously from the national-led government um, of the day. And so uh, that's sad for them as a party, but I also think for us as a country. That kind of debate's also um, found its way into the House. The Speaker it of the is. House has introduced a new tikanga into Parliament, despite politicians having the parliamentary privilege. Um, you can't call someone a racist, is that fair? We have you know, uh, really interesting rules in Parliament around the use of the word liar and a number of other uh, words in but the debate. But you can call chamber. someone a rapist, um, but not well, a racist. That, and actually that caused a highly charged debate as yes. well. So what is it, do you think, that's so tapu about that word racist in Parliament? What, what's the issue with people being I called a racist? Oh, oh no, do, do, I do not be under the view at all that you're unable to use the word. Um, that word has been used and rightly but used in Parliament. But someone a racist. Yeah, and, and that has been done before as well and I don't think anyone's removing the right to call out you know certain perspectives when they see it and when they hold it the question for us is can that then you know can those views still be offered up in Parliament well if they are they will be called out and they will be pushed back on and that is as it should be uh, in opposition you called for well you gave a promise actually and you kept it um, to hold an inquiry into state abuse yes. um, but you went further and it's a rural commission it is and we're hearing the evidence now. Did you have any idea to the extent of the abuse that was going on? Sadly, yes. Yeah, I, I think anyone who had seen any of the reports that came through from the work that was led, led by Judge Carolyn Henwood or had ever spoken to a victim would have known the scale. And so, yes, um, none of that has surprised me, sadly. In 2017, the then Prime Minister, Bill English, um, said that actually to have an inquiry there was no need because looking backwards would do nothing to you know change the future what do you hope that this royal commission of inquiry will do to change the stake here how can, how can we ensure um, that we have a system that cares for the well-being of those that it's meant to exist for if we haven't learned from the mistakes of our past 
you know, that for me is almost saying there's no point in teaching history because there's nothing to learn from it, there's everything to learn from it. And one of the most common themes I ever heard from victims of abuse in state care was, I just want to uh, ensure this doesn't happen to anyone else. And so they saw sharing their story as a form of protection for others. Uh, that is why it's so important that we listen and we hear those lessons. When we listened to those mums last year, um, you know, five babies a week being uplifted yep. uh, from families, newborns, they're victims, I guess, yep. of, of the system again. You must be fairly disappointed with the way that's, you know, the state care is going at the moment. You know, this is, we're trying to turn around an entire ship. And for us, the focus that we want, of course, is an environment where where no child is removed from their whānau because that causes trauma that just exists for decades and generations. So trying to put much more resource into, you know, those supports, those preventions, working with, you know, our community, whānau, iwi, in partnership to boost that preventative work. And you see the starting of funding for that in this budget as well, but also the work that Witter Gardner is doing alongside Calvin Davis to try and change and turn around that ship. And the Minister um, says that there will be something uh, coming in the future, yeah. and he wouldn't comment on it, but the Waitangi Tribunal has recommended that it be uh, a transitional Māori authority so Oranga Tamariki doesn't uh, take Māori children into their care. Yeah, so that was the finding, you know, that was the recommendation of the tribunal and, you know, we've we've wanted to take our time. We've got a, um, a really fantastic advisory board that's working with the minister. We've got that report, we've got the work of the ombudsman, we've got the children's commissioner. We have no shortage now of views. It's now up to him and that team to really then say what are the next steps for us. But you'll see we haven't been defensive about the need for change mm -hmm. um, and the fact that our social workers day and day out do an incredibly hard job. We have to now walk alongside them as we create that change. So new Māori health authority, possibly um, a new Māori transitional authority? Well, you can hear that we want our outcomes to be different. How we get there, we're just taking a little time on. Kia ora. Kia ora. Ko Jacinda Ardoon Tera. A koake nei, ka tūtaki ki tete i o ngā whetu o tikitoki. Kia Uncle Tex.
Araki mai anō. Leighton Clark has been living with Tourette's since childhood, but over the last year, his condition has given him two million reasons to smile. Known online as Uncle Tix, Leighton has become one of Aotearoa's most popular TikTok personalities. I tūtaki atu a D'Angelo Martin Kiaia. Kia ora, my name is Leighton, I have Tourette's. I'm Olivia. Hi, I'm Alex. He's the TikTok superstar with Tourette's. The food shit. Sorry, <laughs> up there. Love the food. Whose presence on social media has had the country in fits of laughter. We're going to make our uh, keto scones. Stupid bitch. With 2.1 million followers gained in just one year, Leighton Clark is not your regular social media influencer. Yep, I threw the egg. Here at Sylvia Park Mall, an opportunity for fans and followers to meet Uncle Tux in person. Nice to meet you, bro. Have a good one, boys. Who's your guys' favourite social media influencer? Uncle Tux. And you? Uncle Tux. Uncle Tux. How are you, bro? Good. Wherever we go in the country, we're always noticed and always taking photos of people. And we love it. Yeah, it's one of those things, but at the same time, it's very overwhelming for me as a person. So when I go and do events like this, you've got to actually hype yourself up to be able to go do it. He's loud and proud. All right, cool. That's all I need to do. And now embraces his Tourette's. But that wasn't always the case. Leighton Clark grew up in the king country town of Ōtorohanga. Despite growing up in a loving home, he says he struggled as a child not knowing why he was so different. You first discovered that you had Tourette's when you were four years old. Well, I was really young. I was playing on Nintendo and um, trying to get the, I was playing NBA, I was trying to get the ball on the hoop and I could never get in because I, I'd do that. And then I was like, oh shit, okay. Then my nan was like to my mum, oh, he's a, he's a bit weird, isn't he? In terms of you growing up, how was that? Horrible. Was... Just, that, that's the best way to put it, it was horrible growing up. I got suspended from primary school for kicking someone I couldn't help. Actually, they were bullying me, but I didn't do it because they were bullying me. I did it because they were too close and I, I ticked at them and kicked them. It's the only time I've ever lashed out. Mm. Tourette's is a nervous system disorder. It involves uncontrollable, repetitive Shut. movements. Ow, that one hurt. Unwanted sounds, Woo! also known as ticks. Shut up, Leighton. Hence the name Uncle Ticks. Oh, sorry, there goes your mic. Your f microphone. I have what's called coprolalia, so I'm very vocal. And, you know, ah, oh, you f***ing dickhead! Yeah, see? Yeah, very f*** you, cunt. Yeah, I'll be quite vocal, and in other days I could be just quiet as. When you finally realised, OK, I've got Tourette's, how did you cope in those first years? Oh, I didn't. I wanted to kill myself, yeah. Very, 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 very uh, sheltered kid uh, for years. I hated my life. Ah! Sorry, it's pulled the finger at your cameraman. But yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, very, very, very sheltered. But Leighton has now turned his affliction into social media gold. Today, we are making macaroni cheese. Ah! Let's go! Sorry. It was during the first COVID-19 lockdown when Leighton began posting videos featuring his girlfriend and flatmates. Oh, the very first time that I ever did a video, my flat didn't trust my videos. I guess they, they were quite... um. What the hell? What's this? Well, you know, we don't really understand what you're trying to do. They got 300,000 views. No, that was big. That was big for me. Uncle Tix was an overnight success, making people laugh, but with a serious message. We're trying to change the stigma of being disabled or having an illness online. Posting daily content to TikTok is now Leighton's full-time job. Oh, my God. There's a demand for you posting and, and doing this. Like, as soon as I finish this, you fellas are going to leave and I'm going to sit on my computer and build videos till midnight. Stream, go home, go to bed. Same shit every day. I do get paid from doing it, so I'm very fortunate about that. Now it's my job, but it's still, not the, you know, it's still a nine to five. Did you think that you would ever be this big? No. No. I mean, I always had an aspiration to be quite, quite known in what I did, and I was for film. I had a lot of haters and a lot of people that loved it. Everything. And then, you know, I mean, you have that rivalry in this game. Sorry, that was a bit, I hate that spit. I hate that tick. With success comes a constant demand for more content. Here at the office, it's a hive of creativity. 
Yeah, bro. First time at the dentist, bro, and I'm scared. With flatmate and TikTok star Uncle Jack, the duo are constantly trying out new ideas. <laughs> Does it hurt when they do that to your teeth, bro? Nah, bro. Nah, it doesn't hurt that much. Ah! 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 My teeth are all falling out! I see some of the comments saying that you're taking the piss out of your your mm -hmm. your Tourette's and you're, you're acting. That's yeah, yeah. I mean, if you want to call me an actor, that's fine. What's your response to that, though? It's funny. This is what I always say to people. Ah, if I'm an actor, hey, you got to think that Jack is lying, my missus is lying, you're lying. All these people that know me personally or have spoken to me for years or known of me, you know, you've, you've got to say that they, they're all I'm a, you know, they're all liars. They're all with the game. When I head out in public with Leighton, it's clear that his Tourette's is too to do. So much so, he's selective about where he goes to eat. Are you a bit of a regular here? Yeah, yeah. And the, the one thing I like about Camarosa and that is they, they don't judge me. Yeah. For I go to other venues around town, bro. And some venues don't even like me being there because of my ticks, but yeah. I don't care. I'm way more comfortable than I used to be. I don't give a shit now. <laughs> I don't care what people think. So if, if, if you were to be offended, at the end of the day, that's your problem, not me. Especially if I've told you, hey, I've got Tourette's. That's your problem, not mine. And Leighton's determined that his Tourette's will be front and centre as he chases social media success. I'm on my way to being the biggest account in the country and I'll get there. It's got to give me time. <laughs> and I believe that. <laughs> hey, it'll happen. I, I just need another six, seven months to do it. And when we hit the streets of Kirikiriroa, it's clear to see that Leighton is well on the way to achieving that goal. Nice to meet you, fellas. I love you, my mate. Hey, Ray. Thanks, bro. Appreciate it, man. Hey. How are you, bro? Hey. My son loves you. Hey. Hey. What's your name, man? Hey, hey. Shmeen. Hey. 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 brother. From Rangatahi through to the not-so-young, Leighton is clearly a crowd favourite. You talk about recognition in the community, but what is it that drives you to carry on doing what you do? I guess it's just the, the drive to be able to help kids and, and get them through that sort of shit in a day. I know what it's like to, um, to struggle when I had nothing. And the struggle is paying off. Leighton is breaking boundaries for Rangatahi living with Tourette's and getting the big oh, tick no, from his fans. Yes! OK, we're done! Nā D'Angelo Martin, tērā pūrongo with Uncle Tricks, all the way from Ōtarahanga to Kiti Marae, I understand, represent Kari. Uh, kā te rākou hikina te hui e huama no horo mai rā. with support from New Zealand On Air.